Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my trigonometry tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to focus on trigonometry identities with a special focus on simplifying trig expressions and verifying equality of equations. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to focus specifically on, in this tutorial on co-functions, reciprocal functions, and negative identities. So you may have asked yourself, well, what exactly is a co-function? Well, it is the complement of another function. So sine and cosine are co-functions, as are tangents and cotangents, secant and cosecant. And what I want to do here is I want to use an example from a previous tutorial. Now, just as a review here, if we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle and a hypotenuse of length 6, how do we find S over here? See if you remember, S is equal to 1 half of whatever the hypotenuse is, which, of course, equals 3. Likewise, what's F equal to? Well, F is equal to the square root of 3H over 2 which is approximately equal to 5.19. Now we know that angles in a triangle add up to 180. Now let's see what happens whenever we take our 30 and 60 degree angles here and apply them with sine. So the sine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to 1 half. And what is the cosine of 60 degrees? It's also 1 half. Now, something else to know is that all of the following are true. If you take an angle X and it is you apply sine to it, that is going to be equal to taking pi over 2 minus X and taking the cosine of that value. Now, remember I said in the beginning, this part of the course is going to focus a lot on simplifying trig expressions and verifying equality. Well, Knowing this information is going to be extremely valuable whenever it comes to actually doing so. And just to verify that these are indeed true, if I take the sine of pi over 4, which is the same as 45 degrees, that's going to be equal to approximately 0.707. Now if I take the cosine of pi over 2 minus pi over 4, well, that's going to leave us with pi over 4. And likewise, that is also going to be equal to 0.707. Likewise, the same is going to be true if we have tangent. And this is, I'm just using pi over 4. You can use this with any angle. This is going to be equal to 1. And then if we go and do the cotangent, pi over 4, that is also going to be equal to 1. And on your own, you can go test to see if the same is true with secant and cosecant. If you're wondering, both of them equal 1.41 approximately. Now what I'm going to do is use this information on the left to simplify problems on the right. So let's say we have tangent of pi over 2 minus x times cotangent of x. Well, we know that this is going to be equal to, using what we know on the left side of the screen, we're going to be able to convert this into cotangent of x times cotangent of x, which is equal to cotangent squared of x. Okay, so let's do another problem. All I'm doing is using the this information on the left to solve problems on the right. So, what if we have, and you can also pause your screen and go and try to solve the problems while I do them here and then verify your work. Okay, so let's say we have cosine pi over 2 minus x minus 4 sine of x. Well, this is going to be equal to the same as sine of x minus 4 sine of, whoops, sine of x, which is going to be equal to negative 3 sine of x. Now let's do one more. Let's say we have something more complicated. So let's get cosine pi over 2 minus x. You know what that can also be? Divided by sine of x. 
Well, this is also going to be equal to sine of x over sine of x, which is equal to 1. So you can see how this little bit of knowledge is going to make it very easy for us to simplify future problems. And that brings us to some reciprocal functions. Here are our reciprocal functions. And yes, you're just going to have to memorize them. They're not that hard, though. Now what I want to do, and it just, you know, means that the items on the left are equal to the items on the right, okay? Not that complicated. And I also threw in what we had covered previously about how tangents and cotangents relate to sine and cosine. So let's solve a problem. So let's say we have sine pi over 2 minus x. I think you know what that is also equal to. And we subtract from it 2 secant x. Well, this is going to, of course, be equal to cosine of x, if you remember from what we just did. And then minus 2 secant x. But we can also come in here and simplify this down to just secant x minus 2 secant x. And of course, that's going to end up being equal to negative secant x. All right, let's do a couple more problems. All right, so we're, got, we're basically covering two new concepts, so I want to give you a whole bunch of problems so that you will understand how to do them multiple times in multiple different ways. Okay, so as I said, we're going to be able to convert our cotangent into cosine of x over the sine of x, and the cosecant is going to... Be, or be equal to 1 over sine of x. And of course, we can go and add these together to simplify this down to cosine of x plus 1. And you might want to put parentheses around this over sine of x. All right. And do a couple more. And like I said, after you watch this, just go back and try to solve these problems on your own pause your way through. And I'm covering a whole bunch of different ways to approach these different problems here. So we'll say cosine of x over secant of x. Well, that's going to end up being equal to cosine of x times cosine of x, which equals cosine squared x. And why don't we do one more? Say we have cotangent squared and pi over 2 minus x times cosecant squared x. Well, this is also going to be equal to tangent squared x times cosecant squared x, which is going to be the equal to sine squared x over cosine squared x times 1 over sine squared x, and these simplify down to 1 over cosine squared x. All right, so a whole bunch of examples with co-functions and reciprocal functions, and now I want to talk about negative identities. Now, you are going to have even and odd functions. An even function is one in which our function's value is equal to the negative, whatever the angle is in this situation. And this is said to be y symmetric. Now, examples of even functions in trigonometry, cosine of x is equal to the cosine of negative x. And if you don't believe me, you can go plug into a calculator, cosine pi over 4 is equal to approximately 0 0.707. And guess what? Cosine of negative pi over 4 is also equal to 0 0.707. Another even function in trigonometry is secant. Secant of x is equivalent to secant of negative x. And you can go work that out on your own. We also have odd functions, and odd functions are pretty much everything else. And odd functions are origin symmetric, 
And the way they work is if you have negative x for your angle, that's going to be equal to negative the function x, like this. And like I said, you can see here that sine meets that, as well as tangent, cosecant, and cotangent. So why don't we take all of this knowledge that we just learned so far in this video and solve some problems utilizing all of it. So let's say we have cosine of negative x times the secant of negative x, and we want to simplify this. Well, this can be converted to cosine of x because those are equivalent times and secant can be converted into 1 over cosine of x, which of course if you multiply those together you get a value of 1. Let's do a verification problem. Let's say that we want to verify that sine of negative x times the cotangent of negative x is equal to the cosine of x. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can convert this to negative sine of x times negative cotangent of x. This then can be converted to sine of x times the cosine of x over the sine of x which can be converted into just simply cosine whenever these cancel out. All right, so there you go. Let's do another problem. Let's say we have cotangent x minus pi over two, and no, I didn't just make a typo, I'm trying to make a point, and sine of pi over two minus x. This is not a cofunction identity. Cofunction identity is pi over 2 minus x. Okay? However, we can factor this and make it so. So this is also going to be equal to cotangent negative 1 pi over 2 minus x. And then this stays the same sine pi over 2 minus x. Now the cotangent of negative s or negative x I'll just write it out cotangent of negative x is equal to negative cotangent of x of course as we saw before so we're going to be able to convert this to be equal to negative cotangent pi over 2 minus x times sine of pi over 2 minus x, which is going to be equal to negative tangent x times cosine of x, which is equal to negative sine of x over cosine of x times cosine of x. These guys right here cancel out, and we are finally left with our final answer which is negative sine of x. All right, one more problem. Now with this one, I want to verify that cosine of negative x times the sine of negative x and multiplied times cotangent negative x, that this is going to be equal to the cosine of x over the secant of x. And what we're going to do here is apply our negative identities. So this is going to be cosine of x times negative sine of x times negative cotangent of x cosine of x times and this will be sine of x times, convert this to cosine of x over sine of x, which, if we cancel these out, becomes cosine squared x. 
And is this equal to cosine of x over the secant of x? Well, 1 over the secant of x is equal to the cosine of x. So yes, indeed, we do know that cosine, or what, what our final answer here, cosine squared x is equal to cosine squared x, and that cosine squared x or is equal to this right here. All righty. So there you go, rundown of many trigonometry identities and more coming up. We're going to get more and more advanced. And as you can see here, trigonometry is starting to look more like algebra instead of like geometry. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.